Uh, today we start getting ready for our EOG. Got to double check 100% sure on the dates, but a month from today is when uh, EOG should be starting. I think, uh, I think the 25th is when you take the reading test this year. So for the math EOG, for sixth grade math, there are 53 problems on the test. So I think you got three hours to do 53 problems. So that's about three minutes per question. 45 of those problems count towards your score only. The other eight are what they call field test items. They're kind of like practice questions from the state. You can kind of see whether they're good questions to use in the future or not. Out of the 45 that count, 15 are calculator inactive, 30 are calculator active. So that part of it's pretty good. It's divided into five main topics. The uh, ratios and proportional relationships. We'll get into a, what all these mean a little bit more in a bit. Uh, number system, expressions and equations, geometry, and then statistics. So you can see it's not exactly equal. Each of the first three are around a fourth of your test. The other two kind of a, about an eighth of the test. So some topics a little more important than others, but some topics covered more things than others. So to start with ratios and proportional relationships. This involves things that obviously have ratios, but also the big thing with it will be like the percentage problems that we've done like way back in the fall so there are 24 students in the class 18 students got a school lunch today what percentage of the class got a school lunch so it's asking for a percentage when we're trying to find a percentage who remembers what we do a proportion yeah so we got our lines what part can we fill in automatically Bottom right, we're going to put what? What are we? 100. 100 on the bottom right. We're trying to find the percentage. The percentage is what would go over 100. That's what we're trying to find. So on the other side, on the left side there, we do parts over whole. So which number is my part? 18. And the whole thing is the 24. The two numbers that are diagonal from each other, we multiply number that is diagonal from our blank space is what we divide by. So we would do 18 times 100 divided by 24. In this case, that'll give us 75%. Any questions on that? So obviously there's a bunch of different types of problems that can go with that, but that's about a quarter of your test. So one out of every four questions something kind of along those lines number system number system covers a lot of things these common kind of multiple greatest common factor absolute value fractions decimals negative numbers i guess that a lot of things so this one every six person to enter a class gets a pencil every eight person gets an eraser what number person is the first to get a pencil and an eraser so what a problem like this is asking about is our least common multiple. If I remember correctly, this is something we did in September. So it's been a little while. But all you have to do is kind of list it out. List out your multiples. So every sixth person gets a pencil. So that means person six gets a pencil. One number person gets the next pencil. Twelve. And then... And then... And then, and we'll stop there. So the other one, every eighth person gets an eraser. So person eight gets an eraser. Who's the next one? 16, 24, and I can stop there because that's where I found a match. So the first person to get both is the 24th person. Other way you can do that is if you push the math button on your calculator, 
first one on there is LCM. So once you hit that math button, it's right there below the yellow one. Hit enter for LCM, then you put six, and then comma, eight. The comma's next to the four, or about next to the four. And you should have got 24, right? All right, expressions and equations. This can deal with solving equations or inequalities. You know, you do the opposite. Graphs for the inequalities, you know, which way is the arrow going? Is it open or closed circle? That sort of stuff. Most likely, though, it's going to be just writing equations. So we got Josh. He has $350 in a savings account, and each week he saves an additional $25. What equation shows the total amount Y that Josh has after X weeks? So the way these work, if we got a total amount, which we do right there, that's what it's going to be equal. Okay? So our total amount equals. And we're trying to figure out how much the total amount is. We've got two numbers. 25 and 350. We can see right here, additional. Guess what kind of math that means we're doing? Adding. Yeah, that was a tough one to figure out, wasn't it? All right, now the X has to be in here somewhere. One of those numbers gets multiplied by X. It's X weeks, right? Who remembers the three words we can look for? Two of them start with E. Not equation. Each, anyone got the other one, other E word? Still, still not equation. First day back from spring break. Got dumber, apparently. Or we just forget how words work. Each, every, every is not in this problem. They're not all going to be in every problem. And then anybody remember the last one? Starts with a P, three letters. Per, yes. Good, we got one of them. Each, every, and per. So then when you go after it, we got each week. That means the week goes with the number that goes with that each. So which number goes with the each? 25. And that's where the variable goes then. All right, when you see the each, every, per, whatever it is, each week in this case, X was weeks, weeks goes with that number then. That's where the variable goes. Okay? Any questions on that? Each, every, per means you multiply. Say that. Each, every, per means you multiply. All right? So the one with each, every, or per gets multiplied. Geometry. Some of this is from August. We started off the year with geometry. Area, surface area, volume, that sort of stuff's geometry. So I picked the one that's probably the hardest. Not that any of these are super difficult, but a trapezoid. So the first thing we do on a trapezoid, anybody remember? Base plus base. This is what we remember, really. We don't remember like each every per, but we remember that from August. All right, so base plus base. My bases are 10 and 14, so that adds to 24. Once I add the bases, what do I do now? Divide it by 2. So 24 divided by 2 is 12. And now what, Ashanti? Yeah, now we multiply it by the height, which happens to be 6 in this case, and that gives us 72. All right. Not a very difficult problem to do, is it? But you got to remember the steps, don't you? So yes, I do have them up on the wall, as some of you noticed. However, guess what? Once you take that EOG, not going to be there. I got to either take those down or cover them. All right, so 
you can see area, surface area. Remember, that's when like you got the net with the box that's kind of flattened kind of thing. Volume also. All right, statistics. This one should be the one we have to spend the least amount of time reviewing because it's the last thing we did. So median, what's median? Middle number. So I want to list them from least to greatest to start with. So I got eight. 9, 11, 11, 12, 13, 15, 15, 16, 17. All right, I have 10 numbers. So how many numbers should be on each side? Five. We should have five on each side. We want to split it in half. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. If I put five on each side, that puts my middle right there. That means my median is between those two numbers. So how do I figure that out? Add them up and divide by two. So 12 plus 13 is 25. 25 divided by two. You're going to be 12.5. <laughs> in some cases, you might, I mean, you might be able to just realize that too. But whenever you're not sure if it's between two numbers, add them and divide by two. Any questions on that?